or less fortunate. The third theme that I thought was relevant was this notion about the destruction of the Jews. Because today we have a president in Iran, President Ahmadinejad, who has actually articulated maybe what a lot of other, what other people think, that the world should be rid of the Jews and Israel wiped off the map. This is not too dissimilar to what Haman was proposing to Hasverosh back in those, that time many, many years ago. So as we try to confront as an international community, as a Jewish community, the threat posed by Iran and its quest for nuclear weapons, we can look back at the threat posed by Haman and see the analogy. And then finally, the theme is about God's protection of us and the ability of divine revelation to hear our prayers when we require them. And what God did through Esther during at the time of Purim was come to the rescue of the Jews from Haman, Haman's decree. And I think what we should all remember here, regardless of our religion, is the importance of faith and of divine revelation at a time of great threat. So there are just a few messages to introduce the uh, Purim celebration that we can we can reflect on as we celebrate today. The first speaker that we're privileged to hear from is Greg Hunt. Greg Hunt is a parliamentary secretary in the Howard government. He is the parliamentary secretary to the foreign minister, having been parliamentary secretary to the environment minister. He's the member for Flinders, up near the Mornington Peninsula. Uh, he is a uh, Fulbright scholar, has been to Yale, and you may have seen has been a regular correspondent in our newspapers. So I'd like to introduce Greg Hunt to you all. Thank you. Shalom, Lekulam, Hag Samek, Vachala Purim. Matai and Haiti be university, and he got to be Israel, Bishville, Vachad Shana. Aval, if Ruth Shirley Mubert may off. No. In the interests of uh, public safety and, uh, and good grammar, I'll continue the rest of my conversation in English. Uh, uh, to uh, Rabbi Malecki, to my good friend Joshua, uh, to, uh, uh, to Michael, to Daniel, to Helen, to Tony, and to our magnificent Mayor John So, and to everybody here, Hadapurim. I'm delighted to be here on behalf of the, uh, the Prime Minister. And before delivering the Prime Minister's message, uh, I do want to make a little confession. Joshua was in fact my best man uh, at my wedding almost uh, almost four years ago, and uh, he's a, a brilliant achiever, but he's actually quite modest because when uh, on one occasion I introduced him as my best man, he said, "Oh no 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 no, I wouldn't say best man, better perhaps, but best." <laughs> and, and so it's it's wonderful to have my closest friend here today. But the message from the Prime Minister is also one about friendship, and really there are three parts to the message he's asked me to bring along today. And the first is about Purim, and the festival of Purim, and the meaning of Purim. And that is that the story of Esther, and Mordecai, and the venal Hanan is a story of triumph in adversity, and above all else, about hope. And even though it's a story which comes from Persia over two and a half thousand years ago, it is a message of absolute relevance today. And what it says is that no matter how dark and no matter how great the threat, the combination of faith and hope is what makes us human, is what makes us who we are, and, is, and speaks to us of the best of who we are and who we can be and how we have to live our lives. And that's why Purim is such a festival of hope and of celebration and of relevance not just to the Jewish community, but to everybody, because it gives us that sense of who we are and what we can be, and no matter how dark and no matter how heavy uh, the burdens, it says we can live a life of meaning and hope and triumph uh, despite the odds. And that's the first message from the Prime Minister. The second message 
is in relation to Judaism and the community in Australia today. Uh, and this is to say thank you. The work that you do uh, for the poor and the underprivileged, the culture and diversity and the strength that you bring to Australia make us a much richer country. Uh, and the sense of development and of how you've contributed to the building of Australia all say that you are an indispensable part uh, and, an inex uh, 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 and an inextricable part of Australia today and Australia tomorrow. And so that second message is of thanks. And the third is to Chabad. And Chabad is a, it, it has a focus on outreach, as Joshua said. And what that means in reality is it's a, is it's a focus on, bridge, uh, on bridging and of reaching across cultures and of spreading a message of diversity and strength and the fact that we can link each other together. Uh, and that is a wonderful and powerful message in today's society when you face the sort of madness which comes out of uh, Iran or elsewhere. And that, that message of bridging is more important than ever before and ultimately that is the message which is going to succeed. That is our task, that is our, tri uh, our responsibility this time, this day, right now. So it is a day of celebration, it's a day of joy, it's a day of hope uh, and I am delighted on behalf of the Prime Minister uh, to reinforce all of those messages and to finish uh, with the very simple point, Hag Samag Vakharapurim. I wouldn't want to try my Hebrew after that. <laughs> our, next, our next speaker is no stranger to you all. He's one of the most outspoken and effective defenders of our harmonious multicultural society, and that's Michael Danby. Michael is the member for Melbourne Ports, having been elected in 1998. He's the secretary to the Australia-Israel Friendship Group. He's the deputy opposition whip. When I knew that I was going to introduce Michael today, I just had a brief look at his maiden speech. And he said in that speech, and I quote, I have always found that the bright light of scrutiny was enough to challenge extremism. And in his life, Michael has been a very outspoken critic of One Nation. He's been an outspoken critic about, he's an outspoken defender, sorry, of Israel's right to live in peace and security. And I think we're very privileged to hear from him today. Michael Danby. I once went to Chag uh, to a Jewish function at the Holocaust Centre where there were 26 speakers, uh, one after the other. So I'll try and keep this uh, short because we, we also want to hear the, uh, the Megillah too. Josh, thank you for that very warm introduction. Rabbi Malecki, Rabbi, uh, Abs Rabbi Absent uh, Herzog, um, parliamentary colleagues. Um, I think we all get a lot of nuckus when we hear uh, uh, Greg Hunt speaking uh, a bit of Hebrew. Uh, having worked as a volunteer uh, in Israel on a kibbutz, just shows you the kind of country Australia is compared to uh, some other countries in the world. It also gives me uh, uh, a lot of nachas to see uh, uh, John So, such a good friend of the Jewish community in Australia, um, and uh, parliamentarians Helen Shardy, Tony Lupton and Daniel Andrews here. It's the first time I've seen Daniel uh, uh, since he's become a minister. It gives me a lot of nachas to uh, see him sitting here. Uh, this uh, it means derived pleasure, by the way. Um, uh, see you sitting here at the, the, the platform because he's an extremely competent person who I really enjoyed working with when he was at the uh, state ALP office. And I know he's a very strong defender of the kind of society that Australia is, where the Australian Jewish community is, as Greg said, part of the living fabric of Australian society. And uh, as Josh said, the message of Purim is uh, a positive one, uh, one of escape from great persecution, and one that has message for these days, as he says. Um, 